begin. So I live in Los Angeles, California now. I just moved there. I lived in Paris for eight years. And when I came to Paris, it's nine o'clock. When I came to Paris, I've been a junkie for ghost tours. And I love this city. And I looked around to try to find a ghost tour. And there was no ghost tour. I'm like, this is an ancient 2000 year old city covered in blood and darkness with Roman history, witches, sorcerers, mysteries galore, and nobody thought to do a ghost tour in Paris. So I went and I tried to find like some tour that had mysteries on it or ghosts or something. Yeah, I went on about 20 tours and there was stories after stories after stories, little pieces here and there. No one put it together. So I started working on a book called Mysteries of Paris based on a Eugene Sue novel of 1846 that was done in three pieces. So for seven years we ran as Mysteries of Paris and this is the first official dark Paris tour. We rebranded the tour because as my discovery was the French don't believe in ghosts. And I tried to ask them when I got my visa to start the, the company. When I started the company, I was like, I want to do a ghost tour. And I've got like uh, brochures from all these different ghost tours around the world. And the French are like, no, there was no ghost tour here. And that was the funny accent of the guy at the, uh, the, uh, the consulate. And I was like, what do you mean there's no ghost tour in Paris? I looked for one, I couldn't find one. I want to move to Paris and I want to set up a ghost tour. And they were like, no, we don't believe in ghosts. We're atheists. In fact, we don't even care. So when you ask a French person if they believe in God, they just go, ah, oh, that's nonsense. I'm like, are you an atheist? No. You believe in God? No. We don't care. We just don't care. We don't want to hear about such nonsense. Now, one of the things I discovered about English speaking people, which French conveniently call Anglo, is we are storytellers from the old Viking days. We like to embellish stories, create stories. When we see something we don't understand, we make something up to make it entertaining. We invented Hollywood and West End theater and Shakespeare. And this is one of the main elements on why ghost stories are a part of our culture and why the French did not, when a French sees something weird, like for example, I asked, a, I asked one gentleman if he believed in the ghost of a guy named Gerard de Naval who hung himself. And he goes, we? I, I've seen the spirit, the spectator. And I'm like, uh, well, can you tell me about it? No. If my friends find out I have talked about the spectator, I am, I am poo. And I was like, and this guy was the director of one of the oldest theaters in Paris. And it was a Phantom of the Opera-like story. He wouldn't tell me. So I had to have my girlfriend dress in a schoolgirl outfit and bring him a bottle of wine. And she came back with the script. So I'll, if we have time, I'll, I'll get to that story on the tour. But most of the stories of the French are tragedies of murder, of betrayal, of death. So we renamed this tour Dark Paris because we're going to walk through the dark side of the city of life. And half the stories have supernatural elements. And one thing that I learned that it might be very interesting for you to be very clear on is the difference between paranormal and supernatural. Does anybody know the difference? Okay. Paranormal can be scientifically proven at some point. Like for example, what was one thing in the 17th century that, sorry, excuse me, the 18th century that in the 19th century was science and in the 18th century was paranormal? They knew what it was. Air. Until 1821, they did not believe air existed. It was empty space. There was no scientific rationale. It moved. There was scientific results. But there was no proof that air existed because they didn't have the technology to be able to discover what it was. Another thing was bacteria. Bugs and germs. And when that was discovered, medical science exploded. It went crazy. And those are two things that are paranormal. 
supernatural is like UFOs. There is no possible way to prove it. Alien life on other planets, there might be microbes, but I don't believe there's aliens coming here. I was at Area 51 a couple weeks ago having a debate with some people. I do travel. I work for the Huffington Post as the vampire and ghost blogger. So if you want to check out my blog on the Huffington Post, I just released a new article on why uh, the new vampire interview with the vampire script has to be uh, rewritten. Um, but uh, Jared Leto, anybody know him? I met him and had a cigarette with, with him once at a 50, 30 Seconds to Mars concert. And he is possibly going to be the new Lestat for Lion Court, the vampire Van Rose. And I think he would be perfect for the role. So tonight we're going to talk about murder, death, executions, mysteries, more death, more murder, lots of blood, guillotines, alchemists, ghosts, and hauntings. And it's up to you if you believe in ghosts or not, or anything supernatural or paranormal. But I am a paranormal investigator, not a supernatural fanatic. So I always look for a scientific explanation in my discoveries and a historical reference. Now everything on the tour absolutely has a source and I am happy to share some of those sources with you. They're either a person I talked to, a piece of information I collected, a manuscript I read, a newspaper article, or a story that I heard on another tour. And then I did the research. A lot of these stories will have various different variations on them. So if you do research on them, you might discover variations on the story. But I try to collect all the stories into one to present to you the most common story that I could find. So are you guys ready to begin the Dark Paris tour, the first ever? Okay. So my name is Sebastian. If you have any questions, please ask them in between each story. Okay, we're going to start with the legends of Notre Dame. Our Lady of Paris. Follow me. 